Welcome to another episode of War Stories. I'm Tom. I'm Chuck. And uh, in our new series of incident debriefs, uh, we are bringing you a debrief this week, right, Chuck? Yeah, we are. Um, <laughs> it's uh, I don't know if anyone has seen it. Um, if you live in California, you've probably seen it because it's been on all the news. Um, it happened about 10, 11 months ago and uh, it involves the Los Angeles Police Department and um, an urban police rifle inside of a Burlington Coat factory. <laughs> um, urban police rifle. Right. That, is definitely that sounds a, better than M16. It, well, so uh, we called it scary. A, we called it a patrol rifle. Yeah, it's a patrol rifle, but it's yeah. urban police rifle. Yeah. Right. UPI. But yeah. yeah. So uh, but isn't that an LAPD? Like if we're talking if we're talking because um, this is an LAPD video that we're going to be debriefing in an LAPD incident. It is LAPD terminology. That's an LAPD terminology, by right? Other, and it has been, but yeah, yeah, it's adopted by other agencies. Um, but yeah, it, it is primarily um, LAPD uh, terminology. However, LAPD has influenced many um, yes. policies and terminologies and ways of doing things. Across look at the half country, the so. fucking police badges on the West Coast. Look at look at fucking uh, Comstat. Comstat is an LAPD thing. Comstat also takes place in New York, and and well, every Comstat, major fucking agency. I think agency. Comstat used but, to be in, was started in New York. I think. Oh, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. I think Comstat did. started maybe, in New York and made its way to Bratton. I, I right. I think that was a Bratton thing. So, but it, it's true. Like the the big agencies influence the little agencies a lot of times. And as yeah. we get into this, I wanted to cover a couple of things. Number one, in, in I I am biased. Right. There we go. Um, I will. I will give you my bias. I'm, I'm having problems with my lighting and oh, okay. my lighting just it I don't understand it. Okay. It just started being like I can change it. Okay. Well, anyway, so I, obviously you guys know I grew up in LA. Uh my father worked for the Los Angeles Police Department. I've got many friends. Elliot worked for the Los Angeles Police Department. The, like I'm biased. I'm positively biased towards LAPD in many ways, right? I think that Adam, you know, growing up watching Adam 12 affected that growing up with my dad that worked there affected that. So I will say this LAPD in many respects is the tip of the spear or was the tip of the spear in training tactics, professional policing. Like, yeah, they set the tone and I'm not saying they're perfect. Okay. Mm. I'm not saying they're perfect. Before from and it. it and I'm not even saying that the 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 agency hasn't changed. I will tell you famously, people who've listened to this show long enough know that my dad, when he, I told him I wanted to become a cop, famously told me anywhere but L.A. Don't go. They are and famous I, for um, Hug a Thug. I can tell you they are the best at that probably in the world. Hug a Thug, big time. LAP loves like a thug. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, so this incident, why don't you t- why don't you break it down for us and, and, and okay. just with it, let's let's just get through the nuts and bolts of the facts, right? So and there is then we can start discussing our opinions on it, right? So there's a nine one one call that goes out at a Burlington Co factory. Um, uh, a suspect is beating uh, a woman with a bike lock. Um, that is now assault with a deadly weapon that is major, no, no, major let's damage. Just stick to yeah. the so stick to the facts. officers respond, they get there, um, they form a tactical team, they go up, um, they just they observe bleeding and blood on the ground. Um, they observe uh, a, a female laying on the ground, appears to be unconscious or severely fucked up, and then they see the suspect in the middle of the aisleway holding said bike lock. Um and during the whole time, you see the uh, the, the officer with the police rifle come up. They start talking, communicating. He takes point because he has, what, the biggest weapon system. And it's a point aim and shoot gun. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, basically basically surgical. You, if you're really good at it, you can come up on target. Bam. And at that distance, you're if you come up on fucking target, it's going so fast. It's going to go and hit where you want it to hit. And you can basically almost look over the sights um, and double eye shoot or kind of like what you do when you're utilizing a shotgun and you can kind of look over the sights. It's anyway. point shoot. But yeah, it's point and shoot. So he comes up. He uh, sees the suspect. Oh, fuck. There he is. 
victim is in close proximity. He fires uh, about three, approximately three, three rounds, rounds, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, first round hits suspect. Uh, there's a stray round that goes through a wall, hits a little girl who is about 13 or 15 years old, trying on her quinceanera dress. Um, and she subsequently dies from her injuries from the stray round uh, from the officer's rifle. That is the meat and potatoes of it. Yep. And now there is a bunch of uproar regarding yep. it and surrounding it. So let's back up because the first I heard about this was a news story. LAPD kills 15 year old girl with stray bullet you know trying on immediate dresses bad. for her birthday like it was right. it was like if the news could write they, they picked every single word to deliberately <laughs> write this headline to make it sound as awful as possible i think the only the word LAP. they didn't use is murder right i don't I, yeah right i don't know that they actually you, you use the word murder but they, they they imply it heavily right yeah. um and i was interested to see what was going to happen so, so i've been reading a little bit about it as it goes on i know that um and we'll get into uh, these are the these are the things i know i know that yeah the chief ultimately found all three shots out of policy and then the police commission ultimately found uh two of the shots out of policy but the first shot in policy and so that's that's what i know about the thing and then i know there was some body camera footage released so chuck and i watched it um this is what I saw, it. right? The, I, I, I haven't, I've, I've watched the main in-store body camera footage. I haven't watched, like, like, I didn't go and research the, you know, five minutes leading up to it or whatever. And, um, but I can tell clip. you, yeah, it's between this, because you can go and you can watch the store security camera footage of this dude beating, like, what, two customers or something you like can, that? Yeah, you can watch the he full to, uh, yeah. video on YouTube yeah. of everything that they everything. have gotten there. Everything that LAPD's released. released. Public. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> so this, <laughs> so this guy is beating people with a, it looks like I, I and I can't tell because I'll be honest when, when the body it's, camera footage, when he points the gun at the guy and, and fires, I can see something in his hand. Yes. Yeah, so it, but because it read. Lock. Yeah. So because I read what that they said, a bike lock, that's what I, that's why I knew. But if I didn't know what I was looking at, I'm not so he sure. I, a man. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure I could be able to identify what it was I was looking at from the video. Now, that's not to say that in person the officer couldn't have identified it or not. You know, and they already have comments right. of the we'll calls. Get, yeah, and, we'll get yeah. to that. So um I saw the video now. So they they go in and dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna see right now. That's a that's an old ass patrol rifle. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you something let me fucking tell you something they issue mm -hmm. um they issue vietnam era m16s yeah. to the point where some people's urban police rifles don't have a fucking forward assist and they tell you from what i've heard going through the school which i have never attended <clears throat> um they tell you Simulate forward assist. Simulate, simulate it. I'm like, but you don't simulate. have forward assist. Simulate it. Yeah, you have to simulate. It. I'm like, the fuck. So what happens when you build that muscle memory and you go to rack around, you go to pull the trigger, it's spongy, and you're like, huh, fuck, maybe I should hit my forward assist. Oh, I don't fucking have forward assist. What do I got to do? I got to strip that bitch. I got to rack it out. I got to yeah. slam it in, and I got to rack it hard, and hopefully it seats the fucking round. If now, not, man, I'm just gonna throw it back in my car. I'm gonna tell you this fuck, right now. Dude? I thought that my agency's old ass surplus rifles were bad. When I got in my shooting, that's what I had. I was wrong. I had that old ass rifle. Yeah, that's bad. Okay. But it's equipment, bad. I mean, it's a poor craftsman that blames his tools, right? We know that. So it wasn't the well, right fault. Outstanding. It's an outstanding piece of equipment. It's fucking yeah, it's yeah. an M16. It's, it's just old right. as fuck. It's, right. It's dirty. It's that's like saying I it's have a 1911 like my coffee. shit. <laughs> And other things. And other things. <laughs> um, uh, whatever. So he fires three rounds. I watched the video. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. He comes up. There's officers in front of him. He's got the rifle. He takes the lead. He maneuvers through the officers to the front of the pack. Yep. He sees blood on the floor. He says, there's blood, yep. there's blood, there's blood. Yep. There is no gunfire whatsoever 
in any of it. The only gunfire you hear is the three rounds this guy shoots. Right. So yes. They get to the blood. They pass the blood. They they come upon a lady. So it, imagine like stores where you're walking the main aisles, right? Mm-hmm. And then you can turn right or left to go up or down an aisle full of merchandise, right? There's the big aisle that connects you down all the other aisles. So right. that's kind of what they're in. And then this grid you, section, right? When they come upon this lady, she's at like the end cap aisle of fucking socks or whatever. It, it looked like. like she was trying to crawl out of the fucking aisle. She like, was trying to crawl out of the. Out of aisle. That's right. That's, that's what it looks like. Yep, it looked like she it's was trying graphic. to crawl out of it. And she's she's bleeding, and she's on her she, elbow, she, and she's, she's on her ass, and she's like, "This is a no shit like scenario. Dude, this is bad. Like, yeah, right. It's not great. That's for no. sure. And." The suspect is about 20 feet back away Mm -hmm. with the cable lock in his hand. Right. So that's when the officer pretty quickly lifts and fires three rounds. Good. Okay. Yes. I love it. Then the aftermath ensues. Right. Right. One of those rounds goes either through the suspect or misses the suspect and through a fucking paper wall, striking a little girl. Okay. So now do you, because I read, I have an article and I read what the officer's statements were. And he probably is, I don't, what was his statements? Read, I didn't read his statements, but I want to know his articulation because I've already got it. So essentially, I I already know what I would say, but I'm experienced. He, okay. Well, this is, so this is, this is I'm the fucking experience. part. So <laughs> he basically misread the situation and well, thought they were that? well, no, but he said he thought he was responding to an active shooter. Yeah. And he was going to the front of the pack because he had the patrol rifle. Right. And then when he sees the suspect standing there, according to his statement, he mistook what was in his hand. For a gun. For a gun. That's fine. Shot him. Okay. It's fine. Deadly weapon for a deadly weapon. Still deadly weapon. Yeah, I, so that was his statement. Now I'll get mm-hmm. into, um, well, maybe I should just start reading this. Okay. Oh. Um, LAPD oh. officer violated policy when he shot innocent girl suspect at NoHo Burlington panel rules. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to talk about the headline for a second. When he shot innocent sure. girl, yeah, okay, there That's she's not suspected sucks. of a crime. She she's not innocent, yeah. right? She is uninvolved. <clears throat> she is, yeah. She's a bystander, right? Like, I always hate like it doesn't get you views though. I know. Okay, <laughs> poor girl. I, I feel for the family though. I really right. Do. No, no. That's no. it's ultimately there's a 14 year old girl that's dead. Right. She's dead. Yeah. Um, and that's. The big question for me is, does the shooting of this 14 year old girl, is it <clears throat> is it worth the cost of admission for shooting the guy with the bike lock? Right. That's my common sense. That's not my legal kind of test mm-hmm. for what what he could or couldn't have done. Right. Mm-hmm. That's not the policy test. That is my hindsight Monday morning quarterback, like. In the grand scheme of things, was it worth it kind of test? And I would never argue that an innocent 14 year old, well, they're not, see, they're, I'm using it because I read it right. I would not <laughs> argue that an uninvolved bystander's life is necessarily worth this suspect's life. Like, it's not a one to one trade. Like, I don't want to argue, I don't want anybody to think that we're arguing that <clears throat> it's this little girl's death is justified because the suspect was committing a crime right. and he had to die. Right. Like, that's not. Yeah. That's not what I'm arguing. So regardless of what we're saying, I don't want anybody in that family or anybody like to misconstrue. Don't fucking at me and saying. say that this poor 14 year old girl did d- deserve to die because she did not. She didn't. Right? She did not deserve to die. And ultimately, all. the ultimately the blame. Right. The blame for everything that happened lays on the suspect. Because if and the suspect had not been doing what he was doing, the officers <clears throat> would not have responded to right. the call. Okay, so and unfortunately, the family knows that they're gonna. They're like, okay, well, we're gonna get money from this, yeah, right? LAPD, LAPD has deep pockets. Has deep Our daughter pockets. died. We want some money. Exactly, but they're mm-hmm. running another person through the mud and dirt to get there. 
and well, so I, they don't care. Doesn't their well pain, yeah, but their pain <clears throat> right. is more important, and their pain and their money is more important than this officer's life and reputation. Okay, yeah. So like, I can, I can say okay. this real quick. That officer probably feel no. I know he feels fucking horrible yep. he has yep. to live with the rest of his life knowing that he killed a child yep. that he didn't even know was fucking there and yep. it was a bad bad accident that happened and it's it's not necessarily his fault but he's going to fucking blame himself for the rest of his life and it's going to fuck his psyche up for the rest of his life he's probably like you have to go to therapy three sessions before you can get field certified again right he's probably going through a lot fucking more on his own I, I don't city, think or well if he even if he keeps his job would, after this i right, would fucking like, be yeah for <clears throat> they can't fire him if they fire him they get sued so they get double sued well but, i mean they, they can they can come after him civilly if they really fuck him um because there's some, been some new laws passed in california yeah, about, where if you post can come after you and they, they can decertify you post decertifies you you're fucking done but <clears throat> there's a new law it's basically you know like the um fuck what was it um the uh was that um, well, let me explain real quick for the listeners that don't know. Post, P-O-S-T, Post, Police Officer Standards Police and Officer. Training. It's the California Commission on Peace Officer Standards yeah. and Training. They are the ones that basically certify people to be police officers. And according to the state of California, you cannot yeah. you cannot so, work <clears throat> as a sworn police officer for any agency unless you have right. been certified by Post. Right. And qualified immunity is what I was thinking. Qualified immunity yes. is a thing where officers are basically backed by their agencies, right? If something goes down and they're not civilly liable for anything, the department picks it up, they hire lawyers, yep. things like right. that. Well, qualified immunity, they tried stripping it, uh, what, last year or a year before. Um, they were unsuccessful. However, they did a hybrid qualified immunity where they were able to take some of the protections away and put that more upon the officer and... Um, uh, not on the agency. So now there are separate things where the officers have to pay extra for, but it's still like not a hundred percent. It's, it's, it's exactly like insurance and it's not as good as before. So if he really gets screwed over, like if he's held civilly liable, he's going to lose his house. He's going to lose. Well, so this is what I had. I had, there was, there was, um, when I was going through, so I can tell you, this is not the, the 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 limited protections of qualified immunity are not a new thing. And I've tried to explain this to people as the qualified immunity debate rages or not rages, but simmers in the public <laughs> debate about police. Right. If you're out of policy, the department does not have to indemnify you. Right. And if, if that was that was what I was told in California. And I'm sure there are states that are even worse than that, right? But the ultimate thing is is that if they found that you acted out of policy and a lawsuit comes down they are not required by law to cover your ass you can be sued separately whereas if you are acting within the course and scope of your duties and you're within policy the department is required to cover your ass that's that was the that was the way it was right in this instance i don't know how much the new because i don't know what the new laws are about qualified immunity but i don't know that they would protect this guy or, or, or that the old laws would have protected this guy anyway, because what we are finding in this article is that both the chief and the police commission have determined that he was out of policy. Now I'll go through this real quick. It says uh, he fired a uh, fired a rifle suspected da, 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 fired three times when police responded to a Burlington co uh, clothing Which store in the San Fernando Valley. Well, no, he could have emptied his bag, but you know, that's, that's usually what, a lot of cops do with their handgun. Just empty your mag. Then you reload, give them a couple more, and then you go, I fired two rounds. <laughs> and it's not, we're not Which lying. Not good. It's just that your brain, like, yeah. completely. We've talked about it before. Yeah, we've talked about it before. Um, So, the this guy, Daniel Lopez, brutally attacked two women on December 23rd of 2021. Uh. So this girl was in the dressing room with her mother trying on uh, quinceanera dresses. I'm skipping through all the flowery bullshit of the article. Um, the police commission ruled that Jones was justified in firing once, but that his two subsequent shots were out of policy, whereas police chief Michael Moore previously found in his own review that all three shots were unjustified. So let's talk about that for a second. Mm -mm. It was not unjustified. First of all, that policy, he, this kid is in policy. He needs to do a better job of articulating it and not backpedaling. 
um, from what you read, what his statements was, because I would be like, ooh, if well, I was his supervisor, yeah. I'd be like, hey, hey, man, or his attorney, I'd be like, hey, dude. Um, first of all, articulate this shit. If you need to rewatch your body body warm video, rewatch your body warm video. But look at this way, regardless if you were responding to an active shooter or not, and you saw someone who had a fucking lock or a knife, it's still a deadly weapon. You saw a deadly weapon. If you th appeared in your brain as a fucking uh, a firearm and you fired and you fired three rounds, you're well within policy. Because if he takes off and they're like, oh, well, <clears throat> they can we can play devil's advocate. And like, oh, well, he was trying to leave. That suspect looked like he was running away. OK, cool. A violent escape with a feeling fleeing felon. If you do not apprehend that suspect, his actions are likely to persist and take other lives or maim, severely maim and cause mayhem to other bystanders. So you have a violent, a violent fleeing felon, right? Where you are allowed to shoot <clears throat> because you know that if you do not apprehend him or stop his actions and neutralize the threat, yeah, they will continue we to talk about the violent fleeing felon. Fun. Right. Okay. And so we know we have that you can shoot somebody who just, just because they're not squaring off against you and they're fleeing right doesn't mean it's it doesn't mean it's hands off no and i think the reason why they're like oh out of policy is because they're cya big time they're like we don't want any more lawsuits like we want to rather, you're gonna get a lawsuit would, like except right but they're looking at it like we would rather get rid of this number or throw this number to the wolves which i'm talking about a person yeah. but the you're looked at as a number right so right. they're like well, we just rather just take this number and give it to them it appeases the public, keeps us out of hot water, and makes our jobs easier, which is not the way a police department should be working. And that's very demoralizing for officers who are on the street every day because right. then they second guess themselves when they go on calls. And they're right. like, well, if I fucking take if, if I take that shot, I'm fucked. So they don't take it. And you, you know, someone gets hurt or killed. And that's one of your officers, but it's just a number, right? So um, they're like, well, well we'll just throw them to the wolves, right? And well, what he told fair. the LAPD's use of force review board was that and this is according to the article. He believed someone inside the store was shooting people that he saw a bleeding victim. He mistook the bicycle lock that he was wielding for a gun and that he thought a wall behind the guy backed up against to exterior brick wall that would block the officer's shots when it contained a women's dressing rooms. So now. I. Let's get into the stickiest part of this, right? Mm -hmm. I First of all. I have an issue with any police commission that says they can when when it's boom, 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 because it is it's boom, boom, boom. Right. Right. When they can say the first round was in policy, but the next two shots were out of policy. They've never been in that situation. You've never been in that situation. Number one. I, I'm actually more comfortable with the chief just saying, fuck you, you're all your shots were out of policy. Right. Because that makes more sense to me. Either he was in with all of his shots or he was out with all of his shots because there was no pause. It was basically one volley of fire, right? Now, the fact that he missed two of the shots and one of the rounds overpenetrated through a wall and killed a, a girl is hindsight, right? And if a round never went through a wall and struck a little girl, let's say just one round hit a wall, all those shots, all would three shots policy. would be in policy. So I and don't think fucked. you can determine whether or not a shot is in or out of policy based on what it does after it leaves the rifle. You have to make the determination on what the officer's seeing before it leaves the rifle, and you can't Monday morning quarterback bullets any more than you can quarterback Monday morning quarterback people's actions, as right. Graham versus Connor tells us. But Chuck, that doesn't mean I don't have problems with this. And I don't <clears throat> necessarily like like a I don't think that the officer was wrong, but I definitely see some areas that are not necessarily his fault. They're his responsibility, but they are caused by this convoluted ass backpedaling, forward pedaling pendulum of police administration. We want you to be deadly and kill people and use patrol rifles and go address the threat and go aggress the threat and go in there and kill people if there's an active shooter. And we want you to da -da -da, don't be a coward, right? right? Look at Uvalde. Right. All, the first thing they did was call all those cops cowards. And rightfully so in a, in in many ways though the, the there are incidents where officers don't take action you know the 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 guy There's down in cowardice. florida yeah. right like so i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say anything about like anyone specific cowardice -wise, <clears throat> but we just know there are issues with like why didn't you do what you were trained and paid to do right, right. like that's there's a responsibility to that 
So again, that's why I'm comfortable with it all it being all in or all out on the bullets. I don't like this whole wishy-washy. The first one was okay, but the other two were bad. Like that shouldn't even be allowed, right? Unless it's two right. volleys of fire. And then you can say your first volley of fire, right? If it's boom, boom, boom. And the guy goes down to the ground and then the guy walks up two seconds later and boom, shoots him in the head. Okay. That's out of I policy. Got that, like that's out of policy, <laughs> right? Like There's like, no need I'm for a coup de gras saying, shot. You know what I mean? Right. I'm not saying that you can't judge a every shot or every vol but i think to say that three shots in rapid succession that are just boo, 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 might as well be one trigger press in this all those shots mind. should be in policy they they are in and around here's here's me everything that i've i saw and and i've been watching this on the news because it pops up every fucking day <clears throat> and that's why i want to talk about it because it's just it's not dying and the story is still going on and i've been watching the news um, and I live here in in California, so it's yeah. And if the, the news time. wants to turn it into a major thing, they're going to turn it into. Then a major they thing. have, and and it's the family, and the family is is you know they're probably being coached by you know whatever lawyers for money purposes, sure. um, which is sad. And um, which again, this this comes down to reporters and lawyers, man. I fucking yeah. hate like they're saying that the, the the cop was basically a cowboy he was rushing in front pushing his way to the front and if you watch the beginning of the video he calmly comes up and goes hey let, let guys start moving he's like hey hold on i have the the police rifle let me get in front and he gets in front and then they start moving quickly because they're trying to get where they're going in a fast pace and then you hear one of the officers in the back then there's good communication this whole fucking time hey slow down slow down slow down which is a good thing because sometimes when you get amped up you start to move quicker so he slows down as they're coming up onto the victim they are see, communicating I, that's where i, I disagree victim, i see blood i think this guy got tunnel vision oh sure i'm sure he got yeah, there's because i do vision, see what you're talking about the other officer in the back break it he right. goes, hey, well, slow down. And he doesn't mean down. just because he says it. He, I didn't see how that's the thing. I don't see him slow down. <clears throat> he does. Um, I see because I, I watched the video and it says, you know, uh, let's see. Um, in his report, he's the, mission, the chief said that Jones was hyper focused on his belief that this was an active shooter scenario and bullshit. may have failed to conduct an objective assessment when he arrived at the scene. I'm not entirely in disagreement with that. However, this also goes to the fact that if they had not charged in and it had been an active shooter, you'd be hoisting them up. So, 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 so you need everybody needs to fucking calm down and make a decision. Either we're charging in or we're going to slow down. I can play devil, devil's advocate on this because I know um, active shooter policies and procedures. Right. So Me if too. you're going in and, and you see a, a um, um, right, but I, I familiar with the really most updated recent one. Um, and so I, I can see where he, the chief's like, okay, um, you, you rushed in too quick. You should have done a better assessment. Okay. Because what, what it tells us when we go to an active shooter, you go to the sound of gunfire. If you don't hear a gunfire, you get into your diamond, your stick, and you go and you, uh, methodically start searching. Right. And you, you, you go to, um, uh, the last known area where the gunfire was, but you methodically search on that way towards it. And tell you hear gunfire, and then you go straight towards the gunfire, right? There was no gunfire, right? So they they uh, probably should have gone a little bit slower, but it seems like they already knew where the fucking victim was because they went straight to her, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I see this whole wishy-washy shit like, okay, well, if you know where there's a victim, you see the victim, you're getting your stick, and you're going, <clears throat> and you're going to where you see a down victim. Okay, cool. You know, that's where I have an issue because – you, you hear them, well, they should have methodically searched, but right, but they went straight to the victim. So mm -hmm. it's like they're trying to get there quick because they know there's a victim down inside. Yeah, they had guidance so, from the store, but that's not an active think, shooter response. And there's no gunfire. No. But there's they, no gunfire. I think it came out as an active shooter, and that's probably why they're acting as an active shooter. However, it's, it's a fucking, you're going towards a victim. So it, there's this whole weird gray area of... Well, they should have methodically searched. Okay, but then they knew that there's a victim down, so they're going towards the victim and the last yeah. known location of the suspect. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a problem with that, but I have a problem with this whole wishy-washy bullshit prior to that. So it's like like you said, pick one side of the fucking fence. Right. So that's that's, that's to the admin. That's not to the street officer. No. To the street officers, when your partner tells you to hold up, like you have to keep Sometimes your head you grab about you. And like, unfortunately they said slow it down slow it down right and i don't think that his partner officers were getting the slow because it's very short like it's it's not long to watch 
Mm -hmm. happens very quickly. And I'm sure in the officers that were there's mind, it happens a lot quicker than that. Right. No, I, I just meant like, from the moment they start walking towards the threat with and the guy like the rifle and then to the actual shots fired, we're talking less than a minute, right? Yeah. And they said, you know, slow down, slow down, slow down. And he does maneuver his way to the front of the pack. Well, if your partner with the rifle is maneuvering his way to the front of the pack and you're telling him to slow down, there might be a time where you need to grab him and say, hold up, what do we have? Right? Like, if you see your partner get look at what happened with that female that grabbed the depth grabbed her sergeant, yeah, the sergeant and it, because the sergeant was out of control and the sergeant turned around and grabbed her by the throat like th- there are times when your partners may be emotionally charged they might be not seeing something you're seeing they might be you, you never know this job is fluid and so i don't want to say that any i'm not perfect i would have i've made mistakes right there are people i probably yeah. should have shot that i didn't sure. um <laughs> but in this instance would i have shot him i don't know i don't know probably not i will tell you from experience of being in similar situations his distance here. Here's where I get into the sticky wickets of it. His distance from the victim, the lack of gunfire, right? The fact that they could have pulled the victim. The victim was already well out of range of the bike lock, right? So, so would would this have changed if you knew it was a bike lock from the beginning and the guy was beating people to death inside? Would that have changed your opinion you on mean? when you should shoot or not? My opinion on when I should shoot is going to be when I feel that there is an imminent threat to life, right? I, my personal thing is if I look and the guy's out of range and this is what I've done, you know, some guy's holding a weapon and anybody that could be a victim of theirs with the exception of a firearm, because a firearm is a ranged weapon. I'm talking about like close combat melee weapons, right? Mm -hmm. Um, My personal opinion was my personal feelings and the, the lens that I tried to look at these things through was, do I need to shoot him? And if I can articulate that I can hold them at gunpoint and prevent them from moving, advancing, turning, hurting somebody else. And then I can get them on the ground and get them cuffed up and get them in custody. That's a win. But if I point a gun at you and I tell you don't move and I feel like it's a deadly force situation and I'm kind of doing you a favor by giving you the opportunity of surrendering because I'm justified Mm -hmm. in shooting you now. And then you do anything else. Okay, it's game on, right? So in this instance, I'm just saying from my personal experience of what I have done, I have responded to scenes like this, taken a breath, kept my wits about me, and and gunned the dude and said, get down on the ground. Because there's there's no, he's not beating the person actively, right? If, it right. would be different if the person was at his feet and his arm was up and he was bringing his bike lock down for another blow that could be then the it's killing basically blow. Close contact then it's, shot. It's a, yeah, right. Just boom, boom, right? Like boom. you got to just kill the dude. Right. The distance to the victim and the lack of gunfire when he entered the store and the, the fact that it clearly, when he got there, like I don't know how the call came out. Maybe Chuck, you can speak to that if if how the call actually came out, because uh, I know you've watched more than I have. And but clearly, the employees in the store were guiding them to a location, and clearly the right. other partner officers were able to see, hear, or perceive things differently than the shooting officer because they were telling him to slow down and hold up. I would love to hear from those officers and talk to them and find out because sometimes it's more about what they saw that the shooting officer didn't see. Right. Like, why didn't you react? Because I've, I've asked that of other officers. I'm all, why didn't you react like more? Why didn't you have a harsher response? And they tell me what they saw. And I go, Oh, if I just saw that, I would have, you know, same thing. So I would be curious to find out that. But ultimately, that's where this gets sticky. Is is it justifiable legally? Yes. Do the ends so I, justify the means with, with two lives being lost? I have the video pulled up right now. Oh, we can listen to the uh, um, 911 call that rings out. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So 
Let me find it. Let me get to it. it. Can often take up to a year to complete. Officers received this... multiple radio calls from the same location that there was a possible shooting in progress, and there were individuals sheltering in place. I think this is it. Multiple radio calls from the same location. Um, he's breaking things. He's breaking things. Um, hello, I need you. Okay. Hold on. Let me just verify that this is this is the, the one. Okay. Yeah. So this is it. All right. So let's go back. Yeah, because I can okay. hear her say she's breaking one calls and radio broadcasts from this incident. Let's go. Everybody out. Evacuate the building, everybody. Evacuate the building. What's the emergency? I have a possible customer in my store attacking attacking customers. Okay. One, two, one, two, one. Victory way. Okay, ma'am, was it a male or female? Ma'am, he's breaking things. He's breaking things. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Hello, I need you to listen to me so I can send some help. Yes. Is it a male or a female? Male? What's the name of your store? Burlington. Where in the store is he? Head the customers, evacuate. Ma'am, ma'am, I need you to answer my question so we can send the police. Okay. Where? On the second floor. Okay. Is he black? Floor. Is he black or Hispanic or Asian? He's Hispanic. What color clothing is he wearing? He's wearing a white, white cap. Mm -hmm. Dude, hold the door. Hold the door. Uh, colorful jacket. He's walking around the store looking for people. Okay. Is there? Is there? Okay. Ma'am. 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 Hey. Ma'am. I need you to only answer the questions. So that way we can get the officer out there. What color pants is he wearing? Uh, jeans. Okay, does he have any weapons? Evacuate! Huh? Does he have oh God, any weapons? RPs are the worst. Get out! He's yeah. using his bike. He's using one of those bike locks. It should hit people. Evacuate! Get out! Okay. He's, he's, part, he's part receiving. So we're okay, going to eventually hear what block, the dispatcher puts out after getting the yeah, info. Oh, yeah, okay. He's no, a, not, no knives or guns, correct? So, so they know it's a bike lock. The dispatcher knows it's a bike lock. And they know it's not an active shooter. Under the influence of any alcohol or narcotics, as far as you know? Yeah. Most likely, yes. What's your name? So they the, that's that's Are interesting. They, they knew what the weapon was. Okay. And is anyone hurt? Does anyone need an ambulance out there? Run, run, run. No, no one's hurt right now that I know of. All right, we'll have an officer. Where is he? We're going to have an officer respond over here, this officer, here. okay? If anything changes, anyone needs an ambulance, he grabs any other weapons or anything, give us a call back, okay? Are you outside of the store? I'm surprised she didn't stay on the phone with her. Yeah, I'm surprised. Huh? Are you outside of the store now? Let's be in the no, you're, you're locked in the office. And, okay. Yeah, that or she's like, this fucking bitch is crazy. Uh, we locked ourselves into the office and the rest of them exited to the emergency doors. Okay. All right. I'm going to stay on the line with you. Oh, there you go. Okay. okay. Yeah, there you go. It's her supervisor. It's like, you need to stay on the line. And the, 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 the emergency exits in the front or in the back? There's like two, three emergency exits. Okay. One in the front, two in the back. Okay. One moment. Okay. Close the door. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't know if he's still in the building. I don't know. See, how many men work there that were fucking too scared to go tackle this dude or beat him with a, a like you know what I mean? Hello, bro. Yeah, like, dude, take him down. What? You know you don't get paid for it, but fucking go take him down. Like, no, I, I mean I would do it just for the story. Right. Like yeah. I worked at a fucking Burlington Go factory and this dude came with a bike lock and started beating people, so I grabbed a fucking fire poker from housewares. Uh, yes, can I, can you send a unit to Burlington North North Hollywood, please? There's a a guy with a gun. You're yeah. where Burlington and what? North Hollywood, please go okay. over I, and be. I need to give me an address, if I don't know where you are. I have no address. This is Victory and Full Water, North the Burlington and North okay. Hollywood. You're giving me too many. Is there anybody there that knows the address where you are? Wow, that's terrible. She just gave her the cross streets and the. Man, you got some booty oh dispatchers. <laughs> I think this is fire. Where are you? Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Can you get to what the police dispatcher put out on the radio? Where? Where are you? 
What street are you on? How does she get to fire? But see, another player called in for a gun. So right. this is where you get to confuse them. No, I get it. That's why I'm curious to see what they put out. Because, you know, I I used to hate it when dispatchers would put out, it's a possible BB gun. Or it's a, po- you know, they, they would say something. Or these have to fall on spanning blocks. I call it a jacket, white shirt, and seeing different things that I'm called. I'm sorry, but it's like, 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 block. It's just hard to hear. It's it's garbled from the radio, but. Shooting just occurred. Shooting just occurred. Victory Boulevard on Laurel Canyon. Victory Boulevard on Laurel Canyon at the Burlington Post Factory. Stand by for addition as opposed to 1586. Okay. So she puts it out as a shooting. on Victory and Laura Canyon, and she just, I didn't get a chance to talk to her, uh, but she told me that they're hiding behind the store because there's a man, I'm not sure if he has a gun, but I think he's making threats inside the store, and I was just calling in case no one else has called yet. So the employee knows what it's up, but these other two people sound like they're bystanders. Right. There was one person from inside of the store, one yeah. person who got called from her mom okay. inside of the store. Did she give you any type of description? So, like, you have... Um, no, she just called Yeah, so we have conflicting reports, and the dispatcher puts it out as possible shooting. This is... Close circuit television video captured that girl suspect prior to the officer's arrival. So Hardcore basically what had happened like is there was four calls that had rang out, right? Mm-hmm. First one, uh the the worker inside the store is hey, this guy with a bike lock. You have another one, there's a guy with a gun, possible guy with a gun. Then you have another code three call that comes out man with a gun shooting just occurred so now you're as you're rolling to this you're right. like okay that got changes your one. mindset it just constantly starts to change yeah that's why these officers go inside of the store and they're like okay now we're in an active shooter it was a man with a bike lock but apparently something changed and now he's got a fucking gun and now it's an active shooter because well, i don't i don't know that they ever the put it out with a bike lock or if that bike lock information that the <clears> the, the, the the rp from the the, the employee i RP think it originally came out that way like with who the bike knows? Lock. And and that's the thing. When you get I heard it. dispatched to something, you have to it's take constantly changing. like like shit, dude. You go back to the day, like when my mom was dispatching, they would just, you know, send you out to a disturbance call, a see the man, an unknown trouble. Like like the the details were so vague. And well, for example, you had to assess the situation when you got there. Yeah. It is good to have more information, but understand right. as a patrol cop, that information could be fucking wrong and usually is. So, for example, I was rolling to a call with a boot and we're, we're rolling code three and it came out as a stabbing. Um, victim called in and said, hey, I've just been stabbed and yada, yada. As we're, we're give the suspect description was a female. As we're in route about to go code six onto the suspect. Another call comes out. I was just being choked by my boyfriend and I stabbed him. I'm like, so now we have both parties calling on one another, right. saying they're both victims of a stabbing or I had to defend myself because this person was choking me. So I stabbed him and you're like, fuck. I look at the boot and I go, hey, we're almost about code six. We can't determine who the fucking person is at fault. Hook everybody up. Yep. You're going to hook her up. I'm going to hook him up. Yep. I don't care. We're going to get an ambulance. We're going to figure it out. But for our safety, we are going yep. to hook everybody up because yep. we don't know what the fuck is going on and we can't make that determination and i'm not getting fucking stabbed and you're not getting stabbed hook her up i'll hook him up everyone's getting hooked the fuck up i don't care we'll figure it out later and put we put them all we on the them ground up. hook them up, up going to you fucking can, jail yeah you can dust them off and apologize later yeah so like it, she ended whatever. up stabbing her boyfriend because he got into an argument and she ends up going to jail because she stabbed the dude, dude in the back multiple fucking times as he's trying to get away from her. So the defensive wounds on him leads to she's a dominant aggressor. She right. goes to jail for domestic stabbing. Like it is what it is. And she but, calls herself in as the victim at one point. Right. I'll yes. tell you, we we went to one and this is um, this is kind of a humorous one. Uh, and I, we told this story on a previous episode. I think a little bit we touched on it, but uh, everybody knows uh, my buddies, Adam and Aaron have been on this show and one of the things that was my most fun moment with those three was we responded to a call. Adam was dispatched as primary. Aaron and I were dispatched um, 
to back him up. <laughs> and it was like one in the morning, midnight, something like that. Woman screaming, bloody murder. We go out to the area. The caller says, I don't know where it's coming from. It's somewhere in my apartment building. I think she's being murdered or beaten. All right. So we roll out. It's quiet. We don't know where to go. So it's kind of one of those situations where you pull up and you listen for disturbance and see if you can find mm-hmm. it. Right. And then we hear the woman screaming. And Adam looks at us and was like, oh, my God, I hear it. Let's go. Right. It was a fucking peacock. It was a peacock. And if you've ever heard a peacock mm-hmm. call in the middle of the night, it sounds like a woman yelling for help. And so I can understand the caller thinking that a woman was screaming and yelling for help. But imagine like, hell, my dad went to a call of a woman screaming and they kicked the door down because they heard her screaming and they came upon two young black people having really excited sex and they didn't even disturb them. They just shut the door and walked out. They were like, oh, cool. Like they didn't, they didn't put their yeah. guns at him. They didn't tell him freeze. Like they realized what the screen was and <clears throat> left. So right. the information isn't always right. That's right. So the now, bottom line. Backing up to now you've heard those, those multiple calls ring out. If you were the responding officer and you put them yourselves in their shoes and now they're like, okay, we had to do the bike lock and now it's been upgraded to a man with a fucking gun. Do you think upon you would have changed your actions uh, going into the store? Nope. No. So what I would have done and cause I've been in situations like this, I would have gained my stick and I thought that the officer with the UPR, the police rifle did a really good job of coming up, stopping everyone going, Hey, let me get to the front. He goes to the front. Then he speeds up. That's where you hear his partner go mm-hmm. slow down. And so right. he, he kind of starts to slow down, but he's still like, he's still humping it. Like he's, he's still going, a good clip. but then he does a really good job of pieing off the um the two aisles. The aisle, there's yeah. two aisles. He pies off. Well, and let's one. back okay, up too. We don't know one. what they mean by slow down. They may just mean we can't keep you're up with your fast. pace, or you're going exactly. Fast That's exactly like it, it may not be slow down. Oh my god, you don't know what you're doing. It could just be simply let's not right. go this fast, right? They are all in the it, same mindset. It, we don't know. One hundred percent. We and haven't you know, interviewed those. They officers. thought he was going fast. It, one, one of the dudes should have grabbed his belt and like, hey, cool. That's what we teach. Yeah, grab somebody's belt. And, and I've done that numerous times. I've pulled people back and you're getting in front of us because mm-hmm. one gun down range is not great. Multiple guns down range is mm-hmm. better. So you don't be in front of us, be with us, but be in the front. So I mean, we'll be sad when, when you get difference. shot first after we smoke the dude that killed you and we'll be at your memorial, but I could just grab your belt and keep you from getting killed. That could work. Right. You pull pull back. And if it, 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 a lot of officers are timid and fuck that like you need to be no. assertive yeah. pull him back because it could save his life or her you're life. a cop just like they're a cop and then he sees Hopefully. the suspect so now he's like the fucking bike lock gun and i've been in situations where i've seen a gun there was no gun okay yeah i've been in i've been forced option simulations where it was a no shoot scenario and i shot because i saw a gun and your brain it has been noted scientifically that your brain can see things that are not there or something that simulates and looks like a gun or the person's acting like it has a gun but there are certain things that play into the psyche. So you have the call that rings out, man with a gun. And then you see a dark object in his hand. Your brain goes, gun, gun, because it's going to preservation of life mode of yourself and other people, right? So mm-hmm. it sees the gun. And then the, you take three shots. We've talked about it before. And this is where I have the problem. I think all those shots need to be in policy. I don't think yes. that I, he has the ability to shoot and he shot. Could he have waited a little bit longer? Sure. Sure, he could have. Were Would I have? People, still people Probably. in the store? Who knows? There could have still been people in the store and his mindset could have been, well, I don't want another person to get fucked up like this because this person looks dead on the floor. Because I don't think when I watched it originally, the, when it came out, like this person was unconscious and not moving, right? So they're like, oh, fuck. Like we haven't had a chance to assess the sus- the victim, the suspect's right there. He's going to go and do this to another person. I fucking shoot. Okay, good to go. <clears throat> but, you know, and then he's like, well, I thought I saw a gun. Like no, Like, no, you need to stick to your fucking guns. And this is where articulation comes into play. If you saw a gun, you saw a gun. Whatever you're seeing later, and this is the issues I have kind of have with body-worn video, is that now you start to second guess yourself. You're like, fuck, there was no gun. Oh, fuck. I'm screwed. I'm cooked. If but you here's saw the, a gun, you saw yeah, a Be confident. Gun. Be confident. This is what I saw. Okay? Yeah. This is what Even I saw. This is my perception of events. Based After on the, the fact, I realized I, I, I don't know where it went. Like, it, I saw it. Exactly. 
Right. Because there are so many times where you see the actions leading up to you. You see a victim down. There's blood everywhere. You're like, right. oh, fuck. And then you see the suspect. You already had the call. Man with a gun. You see him. Object in the hand. You're like, fucking gun. You shoot. Whether you come to find out later there's no gun, you still were in the right mindset. You have a victim yes. down. They're bleeding. Looks to be dead. And now, or unconscious. And you don't know because you haven't had a time to assess. And then you shoot. Yeah. The FBI has statistics that are out, scientifically proven, that your brain takes five seconds to catch up with your body's actions. So those three shots, if they were outside of five seconds in a slow press, boom, two seconds, boom, two seconds, boom, but they weren't. They were rapid succession, three shots, rapid succession, under right, one that volley. one vision, right? Under that right. one vision in your brain of, oh, there's a fucking gun. I need to stop this because other people are going to fucking die. Cut and simple and plain and simple. That's what should have been said. That's, that's and, and in my opinion, if I'm looking at this in the perspective and the eyes and the lens of the officer, for someone who has uh, a similar amount of training and experience or a little bit more, I would be like, okay, yeah, in policy. However, could I have waited a little bit longer? Were people already out of the store? Those are the questions that I would start asking myself, just to have a little bit more experience and things like that. Would I have shot? I don't know. I wasn't fucking there. But based on all the facts and circumstances surrounding this, the victim at my feet fucking bleeding that I don't know if is alive or dead, and I see a suspect and he's holding a weapon, regardless if I saw a gun or I saw the fucking bike lock, if I knew there were still people in the store that he could harm, I would have taken the shot. It sucks that a fucking little girl died, and that's a bad, bad fucking accident. And the suspect is the one at fault, not the fucking officer. We don't have x-ray vision. We didn't know. So, and and if we, we think there might be still people in the story. So that's why the shot was taken because they don't want other people to fall victim of this fucking madman who's unprovoked walking to a store and started fucking hurting people, right? So that's why those shots were taken. And I think that there just needs to be a little bit more backing of officers. Yeah. Can he be trained on a little bit slowing down and, and live fire tactics? Sure. I think that that's a downfall of most agencies because it fall behind. It falls behind. There should be more live fire shooting per year, not going to the range. I'm talking about shooting on the fucking move. Um, active you scenarios. You training. You're training, but not it quality. doesn't happen. Yeah, no, qualling is happen. different. Just shooting, t just yeah. shooting your hundred rounds to make sure you're still accurate is not enough. Our you department had two major trainings. two major range trainings a year, and then every range qualification was also a small training. Right, you did it. You did right. training at range qual, but then you had two major range trainings a year. Now, I want to talk about weapon systems real quick because I think weapon systems have come to play in this in a couple of ways. First, Chuck, imagine, imagine if you will. That this officer had been responding with an MP5 equipped with the Navy trigger group. The Navy trigger group gives you three rounds with one trigger press. <laughs> or burst. guess what? The M16 also has a three round burst function that it could have had on it. Military versions of the M16 have had a three round burst on the on it for ever. Yeah. His didn't. Okay. No, thank God. And he wasn't carrying an MP5, right? Okay. No. But had he been once one trigger press, one trigger press, three rounds. Yeah. If the first round had hit the suspect and the second round had hit the girl in the dressing room off of a Navy trigger group or a tri uh, tri burst on an M16, how can you judge the rounds individually? Right. Yeah. It's, and it's essentially what you have here, right? He goes, boom, boom, boom. Because it's three rounds, session, regardless succession. if it's on a so, burst or not. That's where I think when you really look at what you're talking about is, is it's not boom, stack two seconds, boom, two seconds, boom, right. two seconds. It's boom, 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 right? And I think even me saying it like that was even slower than what it actually was. And where they're going to hang him, though, is you're supposed to assess after every round, right? It's standard policy and procedure and tactics and whatever. You're supposed to assess after every round. Boom, you fire, he's still a threat. Boom, you fire, he's still a threat. Boom, it doesn't mean you have to take a, like two seconds to assess. It's assessing while you're, you're, you're aligned on the target, your sights are aligned on the target. He's still a threat. Boom, he's still a threat. Boom, he's still a threat. Boom. That's where they're going to try to hang him on it. And that's, I think, where they're going to, they're getting him now. And I, it sucks because this, this gentleman is getting his fucking name drug through the dirt because of a bad outcome. And it's sad. But he didn't know if there was a girl like we we preach background all the time. I know you preach background all the time, especially when you were working training and tactics. Right. Mm -hmm. So but his background is a fucking wall. He doesn't right. know what lies beyond that wall. He has no idea. And it's 
and we say this is this is where the this is where the hold up and the slow down can actually be a hindrance on this body cam footage because now everybody's second guessing why they were telling him to hold up and slow down and this is why i wish we could interview those officers because we could know their mindset and what they saw the other weapon system that I think could have changed this entire dynamic. And unfortunately we have gotten away from it. And I'm uh, an old salty cop that he was, he was, you know, on the edge of retirement when we started getting patrol rifles to begin with. Right. So <laughs> he was, he had probably three or four years left on the job. When we put, we started putting patrol rifles. He'd been in an, an MP in the army. Like he was familiar with the weapon system. And he said, I don't always take the rifle. Everybody always grabs it. No, I don't always I take, take a it. shotgun. So that's the thing. The 12 gauge is probably the better weapon system to select right. for the scenario that they were going into. And I like you said, cause I was about to just bring that up. Yeah. You gotta know your I'm going to tell you, right, know your surroundings, know where you're going, know what building you're going into and understand that if you're, if you're going on a, a burglary call, like, you know, if you're going on a, a, and I shouldn't even say burglary, if you're going on an alarm call, because burglary is not mm-hmm. the same in every state. If you're going right. on an alarm call, you're going on a prowler call, you're going on a call where you're going to have make to make entry into an office building, a house, something like that. And you might be searching for an armed suspect, but there might be innocent people in there as well. O- business offices are a prime example, like a lawyer's office or a doctor's office or something like that. Uh, this store any any retail store consider that their that patrol rifle especially with the longer barrels because most patrol guys aren't given an M4 no they're given and the difference is huge in Clean one respect barrel. if you're talking about a full size M16 barrel you're talking about muzzle velocity that's a hell of a lot different than an mm. M4 entry gun that's used with a shorter barrel for a CQB the, or a C, yeah. So so when you see these guys making SWAT guys making entry with M4s into houses, you got to understand the difference between a 223 shot out of an M4 with a shortened barrel versus a 223 shot out of a full size M16 with a 20, hell 18 inch barrel, 21 inch barrel. It, it, it makes a huge difference. Yes, it makes a difference in accuracy, right? How right. does it make a difference in accuracy? Well, the bullet has longer to rifle, but also it creates greater muzzle velocity, exactly. giving the bullet a longer distance to travel without any bullet drop. So if you know that going into it, then you need to consider that a 21-inch barrel M16 may over-penetrate fucking drywall, whereas double up buck won't. Right. I would have... So I've taken my, my rifle on um like burglary calls or n- not not just the, like alarm call but like actual burglary calls where fucking burglar alarm they've seen suspects inside so i've taken it i have mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. i'm really confident in it and i'm able mm-hmm. to you know it, it's just it's slung or whatever but it doesn't mean like if i run into the circumstances it's slung i'd fucking sling it and i use my pistol so you have to know when to transfer or, or do your transitions between a rifle and a pistol. If you want to take your UPR, great, take your UPR. But if you're inside of a store where there might be still people inside, maybe switch to your your um, your pistol. Be mm-hmm. in front just in case you have to take a long shot and there is an active shooter and he pins your ass down across the store. That way you can have a more accurate shot. But just know that, and this is the devil devil's advocate, money morning cornerbacking that we're doing. Mm-hmm. Where it's, a, it's a debrief and this is how we learn. So I would have right. We're not saying he shit. had to take those options. No, you have no, options, but, but this is the part of the show where we tell you guys think of your options, right? Exactly. We have a think lot of, of cops that listen, and military guys that listen, but also for the civilians listening that don't understand. Yes, there are options, but no, you don't always have them. I don't know if he had a shotgun in the car. I don't. I don't know. Probably. <laughs> Probably but a lot of times you don't need to but because you don't if you have a UPR, you don't if need you a don't it, right if you if and that's they tell you, oh, you're going to carry a patrol rifle. You don't need to carry a shotgun. There there comes a point at which you're mm-hmm. like, OK, I got to carry my 40 millimeter. I got to carry the beanbag shotgun. I got I to gotta have my taser on my belt. I got to go get the AR. I got to go get the 12 gauge like you're going to your your battle rattle in your car. Like, OK, you're ridiculous. How, like my dad and I laugh about how much shit <clears> I carried <throat> on my belt and how much shit he carried on his belt and how. You know, cops in his day didn't they, they had back problems, but not like we have today because he wasn't wearing he had a cuff case of st- baton <laughs> and a radio yeah. and a gun. That no, was it. No, bitch. He didn't have a radio. 
he oh, had he a was revolver. In the car. <laughs> he had a revolver. <laughs> he had a call box key. He had so he extra had the rounds. in the car where you'd have to run back to the car just to use it. Yes. So he had even less. He had a revolver. Yes. He had handcuff keys, uh, a baton ring, and one cuff case. My dad worked the streets. He was already promoted before the handheld radios became a thing. Such a light belt. Yeah, That's such a light belt. It was it was worse one pair of cuffs. Fucking thing. Can you put keepers mm-hmm. on it? Yep, exactly. And we're, dude, nowadays they're giving you freaking weight belt back braces to go on the inside of your police belt because you're giving and you, you wonder some why, dude. Officers are going down with back problems and medically retiring early because their back is fucking trash. And they wake up in the morning and they feel like a 90 year old man getting out of bed and they're like, how the fuck am I supposed to go to work like this? And you go to work and you get hurt and injured. Like it's fucking crazy. You look at, but, you look at the construction guys. They start to, they started to wear suspenders and have these wide belts because they knew, yeah. and they're not carrying anywhere near the weight on their belts that cops carry on their belts. No. So anyway, and it's heavy, but so, <sighs> all right. I mean, so ultimately it's a shitty scenario. It's a shitty. <laughs> yeah. It's a shitty it's situation. Shitty. It's shitty. It's shitty. shitty. Um, and it, it, the death of this young girl doesn't have to be made shit. Okay. Give them some money because they lost their girl and don't make it shittier by ruining this officer's life any further than it already. Exactly. He's ruining it for himself because he uh, accidentally <laughs> shot and killed a 14 year old girl. Okay. Yeah. A kid. You know, it's not like it's off. just it's sad it's fucking sad understand and, that cops are people it's shitty it's tough all yeah. the way around he, it's yeah. not like he's like well fuck that girl right and guys think about each scenario and situation you're going into if you're going into a store and it's a smaller ho- or a house uh, uh and you have a rifle it might be better suited for that scenario might be better suited for a shotgun because mm-hmm. shotguns are better for close quarters combat Unless you were talking about like you have that M4, but still, Lots you of still have a shotgun. I would still probably take a shotgun, but utilize your utilize your knowledge and the surroundings and the call. You know, if you think I might need this this uh, rifle, okay, sling the rifle. And if you're going into a store, carry your your pistol. Get in front in case you need to take that shot. And then if it turns out that you need to take a long range shot, precision long range shot holster, get your fucking uh, rifle back up on target and there you go but utilize and keep those options available but yep. don't lock your down to don't lock yourself down to one option right so and just be fluid with it we know that these situations change constantly and rapidly and remember your Please partners have tools too if you've yeah. got the rifle and he's got the taser and the other guy's got the pistol be like okay pistol go up. you're up like that's what we would communicate rifle up pistol up shotgun up like mm. taser up you could change the weapon system based on who was carrying it by understanding each person had a role and you didn't have right. to know who had it. You just had to know that everybody had a role. Cause you could say shotgun up. And then the guy carrying the shotgun be like, that's me. Anyway, utilize all the options available to you at yep. that particular time and moment. And you do have them. You should have at least one shotgun, one UPR and at least two less than lethal fucking beanbag guns in case one goes down or a 40 millimeter. Grenade well, I hope launcher. you guys are liking these debriefs time. and I hope they're helpful. We're not trying to fuck anyone. We're not trying to call anyone out. We're just we're just saying that um, we're going to try to make you better. Yeah, and we're going to raise about every option. the public awareness and understanding because we're not good cops. We're not good soldiers. We're not good firefighters. We're not good nurses if we're automatons. Right. If if, right. if we're Robocop, if we if you know, if that were the case, then anybody could do this job. You were selected. You went through a screening process. You proved that you were capable of having this job through the hiring process, through the training process, through the academy process. Don't go out there and fuck it all up by losing your brain. Right. And look at Tom and I. He has a different um, view on things than I do, but we both kind of generally. There's nothing wrong with Chuck's thing. Yeah. There's no problem with what Chuck's saying. And he doesn't have a problem with what I'm saying. We just. We we have different methods of approaching things, but that doesn't mean that Chuck and I wouldn't have been on the same call and shot the dude at the same time or not shot the dude at the same time. Or hell, if Chuck and I had been on this call and Chuck had been the rifle guy and I had been the pistol guy, I might have been I might have put my hand on his shoulder and said, he's he's right there. It's too close for the AR, you know, stand, pull back a little bit or you know, right. you never know. Or, or we would have cordoned off and, and created a better uh, tactical L. And you're yep. like, hey, watch him down this. He's moving down here. Right. And we would attract him in the store while, while group of officers are tending to this. We don't know how it would have played right. out. We do have a little bit more experience in situations like this and in law enforcement in general. Mm-hmm. So would our actions have been different? Maybe. Possibly. Did I work with young cops no. that would have run in like this kid? And not yep. run in. That would have 
gone in swiftly because he wasn't running. I mean, he was mm. hurry in hurry mode, but he, let's not say he was being careless. I don't want to use my words willy nilly. He was not running. Right. He would. Do I know cops that would have gone in at that speed and and handled the situation <laughs> that I trusted, that I trained, that I worked with? It, yes. What What's the worst situation? That he fucking doesn't shoot this guy and he runs around and beats that girl in the dressing room with the bike lock and kills her. And then he gets killed another like person another trying person. to evacuate. So anyway, who knows? All it's right. Just, there's so many fucked up variables in this whole situation. It's a fuck situation. There's so many different angles of approach. There's more than one yeah. way to skin a cat, but m- try to make sure that we always talk about it. Break that tunnel vision. Try to slow yourself down, move fast and quick. But in slow, methodical, not a sl- not slow and methodical, right? Because you're trying to move to a down person, but swiftly, calmly, smoothly. Slowly, what is that? What that saying? Slow, is slow, smooth, smooth, fast. fast. Yeah, yeah, whatever that fucking thing is. Yeah, so do that. <laughs> my my dad always said a good cop eats, stays dry, and goes home at the end of his shift. Mm-hmm. Right? You eat, you stay dry, you go home at the end of your shift. In that time, do not do anything that gets you killed. They get your partner killed, they get you sued, or they get you arrested. Right. Sometimes that's more difficult than others. <laughs> but just be careful out there and and use your brains. So I hope this has been helpful. Chuck, um, do you have our dedication? I do. Okay. So this goes out to Michael Maceda. Marie is a Marine interdiction agent. Michael Maceda was shot and killed during a maritime narcotics interdiction operation approximately 12 miles southwest of Cabo Rojo, Puerto Rico. He and two other Marine interdiction agents intercepted a vessel they believed to be transporting narcotics. One of the occupants of the vessel opened fire on the agents and they began to board it. All three agents and both subjects were shot during the ensuing shootout. The United States Coast Guard flew all three agents to the hospital in Puerto Rico where Agent Maceda later succumbed to his wounds. One of the two smugglers on the boat was also killed. Over 1,300 kilograms of cocaine were recovered from the boat the agents were attempting to board and a second boat that was interdicted nearby. Agent Maceda had served with the United States Customs and Border Protection, Air and Marine Operations for seven years. He was 44 years old. Well, rest as you, brother. We got it from here. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now that Marine Corps drug interdiction sounds dope. No pun intended or pun intended depending on if you liked it or not. All right. Uh, I, I I think that about covers it for this week's episode, Chuck. Um, yeah. We have, still have t-shirts and we still have Wooby hoodies available. And you yes. guys can follow us on all our social media accounts, uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, I, I you know, all those things. Uh, like, subscribe, go, go on and rate us, like rate us five stars because that really helps. What the, what the way the algorithms work, you go out, you rate the podcast, then they go, oh, people really like this podcast. Let's suggest it to other people. So whether whatever uh, right. po- whatever platform you listen to us on, please go ahead and rate us and review us on there. Uh, go on to our social medias and give us a follow. Uh, we've we've got some funny stuff. We post some of these videos. We post some uh, some other content there. Um, we're trying to grow the podcast. Chuck and I don't have time to do this full time and to take it like like we can't be the Hodge twins or donut operator or some of these other people that right. you know um and you know because we just we just don't have the time for it but hey if but you like us if we like it if you rating us yeah, then we might get fuck, there. maybe we get a spot with spotify yeah so and anyway just strictly be on spotify that'd be cool right so i don't know if we could <laughs> we could but, who knows well joe rogan had you know a million downloads an episode that's how he got on spotify if we yeah get, if we get if get we get there, there we're hey awesome cool I'll be happy uh, if we get to a point where we just are able to quit our jobs. That'd be great. That'd be, That'd be fucking great. awesome. So, I could be a gecko breeder uh, yep. and do this. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, please go follow us on our Instagrams, on our Instagram at war underscore underscore story underscore official and our Facebook at war stories podcast. Also go to our website, www.warstoriesofficial.com and grab some gear. Um, if you want to be featured on the show or think you have a cool story, go to booking.warstories at gmail.com. If you have a friend who you think would be a great fit, booking.warstories at gmail.com. Tell them about us. We can also reach out, but let them know 
um, whatever. And then if you want to chat with us, um, you know, and you want to send any cool like stories or anything like that, the mailbag link in the bio on mm-hmm. Instagram and Facebook. Um, yep. And so yeah, go support us there. And if you want to come on the show, please go to booking.warstories at gmail.com. Again, that's booking.warstories at gmail.com. <laughs> and for everybody, um, I, I, I apologize to you earlier over um, on our Instagram page and Facebook that I was trying to get your, your stuff out for Veterans Day. I, I ended up getting food poisoning pretty bad. I was down for about a week and then the fucking holidays hit. It's been pretty, pretty rough here. But just know you are getting some extra shit inside of everything that you've already gotten extra. Um, I'm going to be throwing some one-off stuff in there. So um, as an apology from me, you get free shit. So you get to wait a little longer, but you get something you didn't pay for and it's free and everyone likes free shit. Cool. This episode will drop tomorrow and your shit will be shipped out this week after this airs. So I apologize again. It happens. Life happens again. Sorry, but yep. All right. Until our next episode, come home with your shield around.